Hello. Hi, Hester. All that noise. Okay. <laughs> How are you, Master? I'm fine. Yes. How are you? Everybody okay? We're very well, Master. We feel very honored and grateful to be able to talk to you. All right. Uh, okay. Some question, right? <laughs> Go ahead. The first question, Master, is the scriptures of many religions advise one to choose a virtuous job. However, people often choose according to what they're good at, or what pays well, or what they have to do to support their family. So does having a virtuous job matter, or is it good enough that a person is religious and kind? Well, no, really, it's not enough, of course. Mm, kind and virtuous people earn some different merit for being that. But a bad job earn bad karma uh, on the side, no matter what. You know, they're two separate things. Mm? Yes, ma'am. Okay? So we still need to have a good job, even if we are virtuous, religious, and kind. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you, Master. Good luck to you. Master, the Buddha once said that there are five jobs that one must avoid. These are dealing with weapons, dealing with living beings like slavery, working in meat production or butchery, and selling intoxicants. What makes these jobs so bad? Thank you, Master. Uh, it's obvious because it hurts others. Huh? Uh, like weapons are killing other people, killing animals, killing humans. And slavery is a degradation, is a disrespect for the children of God, because we all have God inside. So we cannot treat God like a slave. Hmm? Working in meat production or butchery, of course, that uh, hurt and kills the animal, mostly in a very uh, gruesome way, and very inhumane way, and very cruel way. So we we cannot even uh, think or imagine this kind of job. And selling intoxicants, of course, is also harming other people. It uh, degrades their dignity, mm, damages their brain and thinking power, and uh, decapacitates their uh, body uh, function. So they are all very bad, of course. We should avoid these things at all costs, avoid all these jobs at all costs. Even if we die, we should never, never engage ourselves into this kind of jobs. Okay? Yes, Master. Hi, Master. Master had said that humans tend to take on jobs that are similar to ones they had before. For example, a former camel driver might come back as a car salesman, working in the transportation business again. Thus, it seems that one is destined for the job they have, is this true for bad jobs, as well as good? And if so, how does one step out of this circle? Yes, by having uh, luck to be acquainted with the good teaching of uh, past or present master, we know which job is uh, virtuous, and uh, if not, at least a common sense, we can tell which job is good and uh, beneficial to us and other beings, and which job is bad and harmful, so we have to choose, even though we're tempted to go back to the old past comic job, but we have to choose. That's why we are given another chance in uh, another lifetime all the time, so we can choose wisely again. Eh? Yeah. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Yeah. It is said that good jobs and other good deeds allow us to build merit. Why would we want to have a lot of merits? What difference does it make in our daily life? Okay. 
Well, it's not just about merit. <laughs> it's about us that we have to be good, you know. And some merit are spiritually helpful, because if we don't have enough merit, our spiritual merit will be deducted, and our spiritual level will be automatically lower. You understand? Yes, yes Master. And also in this lifetime, if we don't have good merit, our life will be also somehow arranged that we have bad karmic retribution, we have uh, terrible things that happen to us. So we have to have merit to protect ourselves as well as to elevate our spiritual level. Because the higher the point, the higher level of spiritual practice, at least it will not be deducted from our spiritual merit. So if you gain some point, spiritual point due to your work, then your spiritual level will be higher. That means closer to God quality, to our original God quality. You see, when we lose some point, then we lower level of our spiritual practice. That means nearer to lower level, to degrading existence. That's why we have to earn merit. You ask me why? Hmm? That is why. Because the higher the level of spiritual practice, the closer to God, hmm? to heaven. Because if we don't earn merit, then we will keep losing merit, and then we become bad inside also, not just losing it. Our quality will change. If we don't have good merit, we will become bad, you see? For example, all human, we have what you call negative and positive, eh? and some uh, good quality and bad quality inside. I will call it deep quality, a DQ. Huh? The DQ is uh, the balance between good and bad inside. And if we have more bad than good, then we are a disaster to ourselves and other people. Do you understand? <laughs> it would be better if we are more good than bad. And it would be best if we are zero bad and limitless good. Any question on that? I have a question, Master. Um, why is it so easy to be bad than to be good in this world? Oh, because it's just a natural uh, of a human to be tempted to do something bad. It's easier. Is it to make our faith stronger in God? Oh, not necessary. <laughs> Not necessary. No, it's just that we are weak. The will is weak and we cannot resist temptation. That's why we become bad. If we are bad, you know, wherever we go, we will make people bad as well. We influence people badly with uh, aggressiveness, irritation, restlessness, and sometimes sickness or prolonged sickness and uh, all kind of harm, for example, like that, okay? So we have to be good, not because we need to earn merit for the merit's sake, but we have to earn merit so that we are good. We have more good quality in us, okay? The master, the real master, is the one who has zero bad and limitless good. But just not all master can reach this. I'm telling you the truth, okay? Yes, master. And Master, um, will it change in the future where um, our planet becomes more positive than negative, where there will be more virtuous people and it will be much yeah, easier yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to do yeah. the good things? We can only hope for that, yes? Yes, Master. Okay, so we have to be good, okay? Now, concerning also, uh, because if we are bad, we will harm people and animals and this environment, whether we want or not, okay, intentionally or not, okay? Yes, we have to earn merit. It is because we have to be good. We have to be good. Because if we are bad, then we give bad influence to other people without doing anything. It's very harmful to be a bad person. A person who has more bad percentage than good, it will be difficult to be with, hard to work with, and uh, very hard to please, etc. And I told you that it could make people sick or feel uncomfortable of any kind. It depends on how bad the person is. Some people have more bad than good 
That's why. For example, they have like, <laughs> oh, some people you don't know. Ninety uh, percent bad and just ten percent good or twenty percent good. That is almost like nothing. That kind of people will make people sick whenever they are near too long or not long even. They make people uncomfortable. If people are already sick and go near that kind of person, they will prolong their sickness. It will be very uncomfortable of different kind to be with that kind of person. And even a spiritual practitioner, even in my group, practicing Kuan Yin method, but if you don't practice well, or you don't really seriously practice, then the back point of your DQ, I mean deep quality, will not change. You just change at the time of initiation or change a little bit, like at least uh, from 90% bad, you will decrease into 80% or 70%, but that is no good at all, almost like nothing. So have to be diligent in spiritual meditation in order to purify ourselves before we can help the world. And about your good and bad, Master, about the deep quality? You know, the bad and good things what I call DQ, hey? I just do research recently. Oh, I don't have any. Okay, zero bad and limitless good, if you want to know. Wow. Now, this deep quality DQ is not personality, it's not character, okay? Because sometimes you see people are very sweet personality and good character and gentlemen and all that. That's not it. That's not the DQ, okay? Because that thing you can learn, you can emulate, or you can fake it. But the DQ is the one deep inside. Only heaven can see. Even I cannot see myself. I have to ask heaven. I'm really surprised many things, because some people, I also don't see it myself. I see that they are good, good, because mostly I look at the soul, I don't look at the character or and the bad, the DQ inside, the, the deep quality inside, I don't look. And I'm surprised at the heavens report, yes? So according to that, even my bad or good is not from my judgment, <laughs> because I could not judge myself, I could not even know it, because we mostly judge people by quality of their personality and character. Do you understand? Yes, yes, sir. And by this, we all wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> Master, is it something we can improve or change? We just have to do good, be good, always think in a noble way. Okay, that's all. Okay, Master. Thank you, Master. Okay. Mm, you're welcome. Hello, Master. Hello, love. How are you? Good, thank you, Master. <laughs> One animal telepathic communicator shared the insight that helping a rabbit once will bring abundance and blessing for a number of future lifetimes, whereas harming a rabbit once will mean lifetimes of deprivation and suffering. If this is true, it seems our every act of treating another being adds or deducts from our future merits or karma. Is this true, Master? Yeah, it is true. It is true not just for rabbit, but for any other animals. If we are kind to any animals, or rescue them, or take care of them, or somehow help them in their trouble time, then we will have earn a lot of merit, not just this lifetime, but in the future lifetime. That's correct. And we should never harm any animals at all, because that retribution will return double, triple to us, and we will suffer the way we make uh, the animals suffer. Thank you, Master. Uh, my next question is, is there a ranking of meritorious diets? For example, yes. from meat-eater to vegetarian, to vegan, to raw vegan, to breatharian. Is there any big differences in merits when switching to those diets? Yes, yes, <laughs> of course, of course. 
meat diet is no merit at all. It's eating up our merit as well. For example, if you have like uh, 100,000 points of spiritual merit and you're eating meat in this lifetime, and that will be deducted, you know, according to how much meat you eat, and then maybe you even become deficit in spiritual merit, and then you have to be reborn into a very lower level of life or suffering in the next life or this lifetime even. So at least the less meat, the less burden to the body and the soul and the mind. And uh, vegan or raw vegan are much, much more uh, preferable than meat or egg or dairy product, of course. They are lighter to the body and more agreeable for spiritual practice, yes. Uh, this is uh, terrible if somebody eats meat, he doesn't know how much he's harming himself. It's better that everybody forsake meat altogether, meat, egg, dairy, fish, anything to do with animals that cause suffering to other beings, we have to avoid, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you, yes, Master. Master. Another thing, the food, the diet that is less burden to the society and the world are the more merit, of course. Hey, eh? Of course, yes. Yes, Master. Hi, Master. Hi. So good to hear your voice. Uh, good also to hear yours. <laughs> Long time, eh? Long time, eh? Yes. <laughs> I'm glad we can speak. Yeah, go ahead, baby. Uh, many meat <laughs> restaurants look so successful with business going well, making it appear that they could have a lot of merits. On the other hand, people who work for charity or welfare, for example, are often underpaid. Master, could you please tell us what is really happening beneath this appearance in terms of merits? Thank you, Master. You know, a meat restaurant may look successful for the time being, until their merit, stored of maybe past karma merit, run out. Then either they will have uh, bad things happen to them or they have to repay next lifetime. Hmm? Whatever we cause, we have to bear the consequence. There is no escape from this uh, spiritual law. So if we sell meat or open meat restaurants, sometimes even killing uh, raw fish or even live uh, seafood and animals and all that. This is uh, incurring terrible bad karma. People just don't know that because this is just another job and they will not earn that much money either. Like, I mean, maybe more than many other jobs, but then how much can they eat, how much can they wear out of that? and they do not know that bad karmic retribution is immense, immense. Everyone who opens uh, meat or fish or this animal's product, restaurant or even uh, shop, they, they do not know how much harm they're doing to themselves. That's why they're doing it. No matter how successful they are, they will have to pay dearly, dearly in the near future or in the next lifetime and even affect their children and their parents, you know, many generations to come as well, wow. whoever partake in this so-called success, you know, the financial that come from this kind of meat restaurant or meat industry or animal industry, they will have to pay so dear, so dear. This is terrible to even think about it. Yes. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah. Yes, Master. Okay, another question, Master, please. Um, how much uh, merit is lost working in a butcher shop or a slaughterhouse, and what is the consequence after this life for such unfortunate souls who work in those jobs? Thanks, Master. What's the consequence? Oh, my God. I don't even want to think about it. You know, either they have to suffer a lot, like the way the animals suffer in this lifetime, or they have to go to hell even, huh? Or they have to um, even degrade their birth into some lower level of existence in order to repay 
this debt in untold suffering. I would advise everybody, please just stay away from this kind of jobs because it's not worthy at all. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Master, if the slaughterhouse workers or the butchers get information to learn about the consequences of their actions and they quit their job, is the previous bad karma they created totally erased or will he or she still be accountable for the killing karma? Thanks, Master. Okay. <laughs> it depends how sincere they are and how fortunate they are if they can find a good master, you know, who imparted to them the light and sound method, and then their sins will be forgiven. And then they have to practice diligently and do some counter-merit, you know. Like, for example, before they were killing animals or selling meat, now they have to be vegan, advocate for vegan, go out of their way to help animals, to rescue animals, for example, and to nourish animals. Then they have a chance, okay, to uh, get away from this bad karma. Otherwise, I don't see any chance at all. Thank you so much, Master. But it's difficult, eh? With, uh, hello. <laughs> Master, the animals kept in the farms in horrible conditions and then killed, do they automatically reincarnate as humans? And do they ever seek revenge for how they were treated? Okay. Not necessarily that they return as human beings, but they might even go direct to heaven. They will never seek revenge because however much suffering they have to undergo in the form of animals, they do have more intuition than humans. They do know that if they have to undergo it, they have to undergo. But not all of the animals undergo because of karma. Some animals, they come down to help humans, but then, uh, of course, humans do not discriminate and they just kill them all. And it doesn't matter if the animal become animal because of karma or because they come down to help us. If we kill any animals, we have to pay a lot, a lot, very dear with our own life, or one life or many lives, or a lot, a lot of our suffering that sometimes we wish we have never been born because the suffering is so great. Sometimes we have to go to hell even for that. But the animal will never seek revenge, mostly not, mostly not, okay? Actually, you can see it, huh? you can see very well, because if the animals truly seek revenge, then humans don't have much chance. You see how big the animals some of them are, yeah? And if yes. they truly want revenge, <laughs> we don't stand a chance to begin with, eh? many of us. We would not be able to kill them even. They would kill us first, eh? don't you think? Yes, Master. Yes, some animals are so strong. Look at the dog. Even the dog is smaller than us, but they could kill a human being easily. Because they're very strong, very strong. Their spirit is strong, their body is strong. <laughs> they are much stronger than human beings. Most of the animals are like that, but they don't harbor vengeance like we do. They don't have hatred in their heart. They are very sweet and docile and very forgiving, very loving, very kind. They just feel sorry for us because they understand more than we do. Okay, my next question, Master. What is the loss of merit for people who catch fish for a living? knowing as we do that, the practices leading to their slaughter can be very brutal and also kill many other lives in the sea. How about fishing as a hobby or hunting? Are these considered the same? Oh, yes, yes, all the same. Of course, it depends on how many we kill and the way we kill, you know, how cruel and how intentionally cruel, for example, like that. But anything that we do harm to any animals, whether hobby or for living, we have to pay accordingly. There is no escape at all whatsoever. Hunting is a no-no, eh? Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. There are many more noble 
hobby. I don't know how can anybody think of hunting as a hobby uh, or fishing as a hobby. How can we enjoy when we see the pain and suffering of others right in front of our eyes and by our hands? I don't know how can anyone enjoy that so-called hobby. Yes, Master. Right, Master. Yes, Master. I have one more? Mm, sure. Is there a difference in merit loss working on a factory farm versus working on a small farm raising organic animals that are still slaughtered for meat? Oh, factory farm, you mean animal factory farm, yes? Yes, Master. Oh, yes, uh, maybe uh, more or less, you know, depends on uh, how cruel the animals are treated in a factory farm or how more kind they're treated in organic uh, animal farms, but I don't see any organic farms. I don't see any organic in killing, raising animals on the intention to begin with at the end to kill them or sell them to be killed for meat. I don't see anything organic in that. So the name uh, organic animal farm should never exist in our dictionary, okay? Yes, organic Master. only should be reserved for vegan, for vegetable or fruit, nut trees, you know, anything that is not harmful to living beings, breathing, living, laughing, walking like animals. So they are all the same to me. But of course, depends on how many animals in the farm that the person raised. And according to that, the loss of merit or the piling up of bad karma will depend upon me. Eh? Okay. Yes, master. Yes, master. Okay, right. Thank you. Thank you, master. Thank you. Hi, master. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, you've mentioned earlier about how terrible it is to open a shop that sells meat. Um, I have a question. Like, if one doesn't work directly with killing, but is working at a shop that sells meat and dairy products, how does that affect one's merit? Oh, oh, oh. you don't have any merit at all. You're losing it every minute. Oh, of course, master. even if we don't kill, but we're selling it. It's the same. We will be partaking in this cruelty, this forbidden action that is against heaven and against life, okay? Yes, Master. So we should never work in a butcher shop or anything to do with animals. Yes, Master. Thank you. Um, Thank my you. next question is, what is the difference in merits lost between the one who kills the animal directly and eats it and the one who eats meat bought from the market? The first one has more karmic retribution, yeah? More sin than the later one. Yes, Master. Mm. Thank yeah. you, Master. Big difference, yes. Um, my next question is, how does the merit work um, if you are trying to help the poor people or disabled people, but you're selling or offering meat, eggs, or dairy to do so? No, no. <laughs> Maybe you have merit, but you also have bad karma, okay? Yes, Master. Anything that comes from this kind of uh, uh, inhumane practices, would not bring you much merit in any case, yeah? Okay? Yes, and the person who receives it might even have more trouble than we wanted to help them. It's better we help people from our pure, uh, hard-earned, honest, and humane kind of job. Hmm? Yes, then the one who gives and the one who takes both will have merit. If we give it to people from the blood money, then the person received will also partake of that bad karma as well. It's, it's a pity. I wouldn't want to take, you know, any charity from people who sell animals product. Yes, Master. Thank you, Master. Yeah. Welcome, Master. Hi, Master. Hi. 
Are you all right, Lev? Yes, thank you, Master. We know from video documentaries that the fur industry causes some of the most extreme suffering to animals and that animals can be killed specifically for leather products. We also see that collecting feathers from birds like geese and wool from sheep involves cruelty. What is the merit lost from making or selling these clothing-related products of fur, feathers, wool, and all leather? Thank you, Master. Oh, <laughs> why do we talk about merit lost? <laughs> Well, we don't even have any merit anyway, you know, I mean, right. we can only talk about sin, accumulated. But merit loss is a very kind way to put it. We lost immense amounts of merit, if we have any. And if we don't have, we're going to pay for it dearly, 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 dearly. Yes. Anything that costs suffering to animal for fur, for meat, for wool, for leather, anything like that will incur a very, very bad, bad, bad karmic consequences and we will have to pay dearly with our own suffering, yeah? Yes. Thank you, Master. I don't see any beauty in cutting a seal or smashing the head of a fox in order to put it on your back. My God, we have so many things right. that we don't need. Yeah, many things we can wear without being so wicked to all the less defensive being. This is terrible. This is really below our dignity to even think about it. I am so sorry if I offend anybody. The truth is the truth. Yes, Master. Just think about it. It makes you feel so, so heartbroken already. How can anybody can actually even do it, hey? Yes. Oh, really, humans have tried so hard to suppress their conscience. That's why they can do it. Yes, oh, I'm getting emotional too. Uh, must I have another question about cosmetics? Uh, many of the famous companies are proud to say that they don't do animal testing anymore, but they still use some animal products like bee wax, lanolin, glycerin, or steric acid. What is the effect of using or selling products containing animal ingredients like this? What is the effect of using? Yeah. We will have to partake in this kind of uh, uh, bad uh, karmic action. Eh? More or less, we will have to also pay. It won't be good for us in the long run if the cosmetic product involves suffering any kind. Yeah, for example, sometimes they share the wool, but they don't hurt the sheep. You're not hurting the sheep, you know what I mean? Yes, Just like yes, if they do it in humane way, but uh, mostly not, that's a problem. Otherwise, sharing the wool for the sheep, it should not be uh, such a sin. Just like we cut our dog's hair sometimes in summer so that he can become cooler in summer, you know. They, it should be that way, then it's all right. But if it hurt or harm the animals in the process of sharing their wound, their fur, then it's bad karma. Yeah. It's always bad when we hurt someone else. Okay? Yes, Master. Thank you, Master. You're welcome. What is the effect of using products such as soaps, shampoos, laundry detergents, cosmetics that contain even small amount of animal products. Thank you, Master. Well, if it's very small and it depends on if the animals are hurt or harmed, you know, in some way or not. Yes, Master. If you just extracted the wool and while they're cutting the wool, they're not harming or hurting the animals, then I don't think any effect, okay? Yes, Master. But the problem with the wool sharing is that because they do it en masse, you know, so they have to do it fast, 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 so they trample, they treat, they drag, they pull the animals so badly that they hurt and suffer uh, some injury. Otherwise, if they just cut the hair, then it's no harm. Hmm? Yes, Master. 
cut the hair, you know, uh, humanely and gently, like the way I would cut my dog's hair, yeah, in yes. summer. Or we cut our own hair in summer and we want it short and cool. Then it's no harm. But if we make the animals suffer in any form at all, we have to pay, no matter under what form of cosmetic we translate it into. Soap, detergent, perfume, whatever. Yeah? If yes. anything involves animal suffering, we must pay. The user, the producer, the seller, all the same. We must pay in one way or another, more or less, you know, it depends. Yes, Master. Thank you. Thank you so much, Master. You're welcome, yes. Hi, Master. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm good now, talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, I would love to. It's just sometimes not always possible. <laughs> yes. Um, I had a question about uh, what happens to our merits if we sell addictive drugs, alcohol, and tobacco? And are some of these substances worse than others? You know what happened, huh? These kind of harmful substances will uh, destroy humans' dignity, reason, and brain, and, you know, uh, physical wellness. So it cannot be anything good. It can only be very, very bad. We should never even uh, think about selling these things or producing these things, except in some extreme case for medical uses, if it's any use of that at all. And some of these, of course, are worse than the others, nay? Yes, Master. But nevertheless, in the long run, they are the same. All bring people to destruction and even destroy families' uh, happiness and social peace and uh, harmony as well. So the sin is big, huh? Yes, Master. The, the loss of merit is immense. I cannot even begin to count it, okay? Just stay away from it. Anyone stay away from all this substance. Right. No producing, no selling, no taking. Not even thinking about it. Thank you, Master. Okay, love? Yes. Um, and what happens to us if we get caught in the trap of being addicted to drugs, alcohol, and tobacco? Oh, this you can ask the United Nations. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anti-drug department or any country, the government's anti-drug department, they would give you a, a big bunch of report. Of course, this is terrible. We are wasting our life and our time. Even after you quit, it's still burdening in the mind and the soul. Oh, we should never, 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 you know, think about these things. should never even uh, spell the name of this substances. That is so terrible. This is the worst of all kind of evil. It's very bad for ourselves and for others and for our families. Oh, my God, I pray that one day human would never have to know the name of these things. But what happens spiritually to a person if they get caught and they're stuck you know, they're addicted to drugs and alcohol or, or tobacco. Okay. This is very difficult for them to get back onto spiritual road. Yes. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult for these people, okay? Mm. Yes, Master. Yeah, if they quit and they sincerely devote their time and life for spiritual practice, and it depends on what kind of spiritual practice as well, then they may regain what they have lost through drugs, alcohol, and the like. Okay, thank you, Master. You're welcome. My last question is, according to Buddhism, if we sell alcohol, we will be born without arms in the next life. Is this kind of thing true? Yes, it is. Wow. Not just the next life, but 500 lives. 
Wow, wow. 500 lives. Wow. That's so incredible. Um, and does the relative goodness of our job affect the next birth, like the body's health, disabilities, or quality of life? Yes, it does. It will affect our next birth. If we are reborn even again as a human, it will affect. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Welcome. Master. Hello. Hi. Nice to hear you again. Uh, yes, same here. I hear you every day almost, once a week at least. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's nice. It's better to hear you. How is your uh, better half? Very good. Very good. Good. Having you, huh? Good. Hi, Master. Good girl. That's <laughs> a real wife. Thank you for letting us be here. I would love to see you. Ah, I would do too. You are a good wife. That's the real Thank wife. Thank you, Master. <laughs> you look better and better too. When I saw you last time, you look younger, huh? All the time. How come? What did he do? Mm. Um, from your blessing, Master. Thank you. Maybe he loves you more now because you are a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, and love makes you young, you know? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm happy for you both. This is a good example of a good couple. That's how a couple should be, you know, work together in a good environment, good cause for others. This is the best. Thank you. That's true love. It is good. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Master. Master, I have two questions. Uh -huh. The first is, what is the karmic price for the people who work in the weapons companies? Is the karmic price the same for both marketing and uh, selling the weapon, or making the weapons and selling them? More or less, more or less, yes, because both are contributing to the destroying of lives. So, you know, they both take the profit of doing this. Yes. Of supporting this kind of destructive uh, weapons, you know, so they're both similar, okay? Yes. And the next question is, how about the scientist who uses their knowledge to kill, like to invent weapons, versus the scientist who saves lives by finding a cure for a disease? Oh, saving lives is always having well, good merit and destroying life is always destructive to ourselves. Uh, one of the scientists, you know, uh, Noble, after he realized it's bad, he dedicated all his uh, fortune to promote peace up to now. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's the way we should do. If we have, by misfortune or misunderstanding, engage in this kind of destructive business, then we have to turn around and change it quickly and instead helping to save lives or to promote peaceful coexistence. Eh? Yes, that would be much better. Yes. Thank you, Master. You're welcome. Hello, Master. How are you, Master? Oh, I'm good, love. I'm good. Go ahead, sweetheart. Okay. Uh, my first question is, uh, do we lose uh, merits for watching negative films or TV shows, such as ones with the violence and profanity? Do we gain merits for watching good positive films or TV shows? Ah, oh, yes, yes. We do lose merits for watching negative films or TV shows, yes. With violence and profanity, yes, we will lose big time merit. And we do gain some merit watching good positive films or TV shows. It depends on who play on it. Of course, we will gain some merit when we watch good TV and a good uh, unconditional program or good film, eh? Mm. But the merit we gain more or less also depends on who plays in the film or who does the uh, 
TV show, Akshitana. I have a big list here about many things. Wow. Yeah. After we finish, I have a quick running, all right? <laughs> About spiritual do's and don'ts, huh? How about that? You like that? Yes, Master. Okay. Okay. Yeah, any more questions? Yes, Master. Uh, my second question is, do we gain merit by thinking positive thoughts? What about negative thoughts? Ah, we gain merit by positive thought, and we lost merit by negative thought. That's for sure. It's obvious. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but negative thought is not as bad yet as negative action. Okay, yes, so ma'am. if you think about something negative, as long as you don't bring it into action yet, you cut it immediately and you counter it with positive thinking, then that effect will be neutralized. Yeah. Yes, master. Yes, master. My last question is: Do we gain merits by praying for others? or the world? My God, when you pray for the world and for others, you don't think of merit, honey. <laughs> you just pray. <laughs> I am sure you ask it for the sake of somebody else. But otherwise, we don't think of merit at all. Huh? When we pray for someone, for the world, then we are in a desperate mood. To, to want to benefit others or the world, we will never think of merit or not merit. I don't know how much merit you gain or do you gain merit at all by praying for others, but I just pray, okay, and I never check out how much merit, so I cannot answer you this. I could not care less about yes, merit. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Master. When Thank we you pray, so much. We should pray with all sincerity and pure-heartedness just for the sake of other people. And if uh, by chance we have any merit from that, uh, it's so much better. If not, we should never care about that in that situation, huh? Yes, And Master. meditate is a good, good prayer. <laughs> meditate on the light and sound, you know, on the reality of connection with God is the best prayer because wherever you go, you are purified by that, and then people around you, the situation, the surrounding will automatically benefit without you even asking for them even. So meditation on the light and sound that I taught you are the best, okay, for everyone and for yourself, of course, whether you gain merit or not. <laughs> well, maybe you gain some merit, but it depends on how sincere and how clean yourself inside. If you are burdened with bad karma, then please forget it. Can't even pray for yourself already. Meditate is a good prayer, okay? Once we are clean and pure, people around us benefit in any case without even praying. But if we are not clean, not pure, we cannot even pray. Hmm? What I mean is, when we are impure and bad, we cannot have enough concentration or high level enough to reach the prayer benefit. Okay? Hi, Master. Hi. How can merit be used or spent? Is it like money to get things to enjoy? What are ways we are spending or losing our merits? Thank you, ah, Master. You want to spend your merit? Wow. I tell you how. Hmm? <laughs> Anytime you want to lose your merit, you go outside, have fun, even go to a meat restaurant to eat something, go anywhere or watch any nonsense movies or, or TV, then you spend your merit very quickly. Hmm? Wow. You want that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But in any case, even uh, a little bit of fun now and then is all right, as long as you use the protective measure that I have taught you hmm? yes, yes, at the time of initiation. Five ways to protect yourself all the time, 24 hours. Yes? Yes, yes, yes Master. Master. Even with that, sometimes uh, the harm seep in. If we don't concentrate well enough and if we forget, then it's a leaking in. So to earn merit is very difficult. Hmm? 
like money is hard earned, but to waste it is very, very easy. If we do nonsensical things, if we do things as is harmful to others or not beneficial to us, oh. and uh, even to go out in the restaurant or go see a movies, you lose some from twenty to few thousand wow. spiritual points. Yes, depends. Yeah, okay. Wherever you go, just remember the protection. Huh? Yes, yes master. master. All right. I have another question, Master. If doing noble good work, like an investment in merits, what are the best ways to multiply our investment the quickest? <laughs> Thank you, Master. Multiply your merit? <laughs> yes, Master. Is that what you want? Multiply the merit by uh, meditation is the best, eh? Yes, Master. And earn also extra merit by doing good deeds, yeah? Helping others as well in spare time. Anybody who support even by feeling happy that somebody opened a restaurant, supporting mentally, spiritually, emotionally for some good job, also earn merit, okay? Thank you, Master. Welcome. Hi, Master. Hi. Master, how much merit do we need to earn in order not to transmigrate back into the cycle of life and birth? Oh, we have to earn enough so that you jump over the three worlds, you know, the astral, the causal, and the Brahma world, because within these three worlds we will be transmigrating again, again, and again. If we to the fourth, we are safer already. To the fifth would be the best. How much merit? Oh, I have to begin with a big, big calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Just do your meditation, okay? Yes, yes Master. Master. Okay. Then the Master take care of the rest. Master Power, take care of the rest. Thank you, Master. In order not to transmigrate, we have to go to the fourth level, okay? That's about five billion points of spiritual practice, okay? Wow. Now, uh, about ten zillions points to the fifth level. Ten zillions. I don't know how to count that. <laughs> All right? If you want to boil that down to mathematics, that's like that. Ten zillion points? That's a lot. But <laughs> Can you so, earn uh, so much in one life? Wow, difficult. Maybe with the help of uh, Master Power and uh, with the help of your past life spiritual practice, maybe. I see. But uh, if you go to the fourth level, you can continue from there. The Master Power will help you to continue to the fifth, yeah? Mm, okay, Master. So all you have to do is earn five meters <laughs> <laughs> to the, you know, the border of the fourth level. That's the, to the border of the fourth level. But don't worry, the merit can be multiplied, depends on your concentration and sincerity. Eh? Yes, Master. Otherwise, uh, one hour of meditation, only about 100,000 points. Wow. Medium concentration. <laughs> and with the maximum concentration? <laughs> oh, well, maybe four or five hundred thousand. A disciple going to Samadhi will gain five hundred thousand points. 500,000 points if a disciple of uh, the light and sound go into samadhi, deep in samadhi, okay? And if we meditate but we don't concentrate at all, then we have even that 40 point, <laughs> even no concentration. If you sit in meditation, you try hard, but you can't concentrate, you still have 40 points. A medium concentration then you have, you know, as I told you already before, and if you are in Samadhi, you gain 500,000 points. And the higher level a practitioner, the more they gain. Yeah? Okay?
I have a question. Like, if we go to a country and we spread your teaching and establish a center there, and the center starts to expand, expand, so lots of people um, learn to know you and to start practicing Guan Yin method. So does that mean the first person initiate the center earn lots of merit, like multiply, yeah, sure. because he sure, sure. started the new center and the country starts to know you and to know the Guan Yin method? Yeah. Of course they do. Yeah, the first person and the second and the third, they all earn merit a lot. Okay. Thank you, Master. You're welcome. Uh, hi, Master. Hi. I have three questions. In a way, we are very lucky to be born at this time, uh, especially with you here. And although the planet is in danger and people are in need of being awakened, you have saved us and uh, we're able to accumulate more merits um, uh, working with you in the mission. How about in times when a uh, planet is in peace, uh, planetary peace, is spiritual progress much slower and the accumulation of merits much slower uh, because maybe they do not have a Supreme Master TV or loving huts uh, to work? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would prefer that we don't have to do loving hood and Supreme Master TV so you all can meditate and enjoy. Peaceful planet, peaceful time means that people have a lot of merit already in order to have such a peaceful time and peaceful country, okay? Yes, 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 yes Master. In that case, we don't even need Supreme Master Television. <laughs> we don't need the Loving Hood, probably they already have uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, Loving Hood or don't have Loving Hood because everybody is vegan already or breatharian already, you know? Yes, Master. The reason why we have the Supreme Master Television to begin with because it's a planetary crisis and uh, I can't just uh, stand there and watch, okay? So we have to put all our energy, finance and uh, manpower into this as well as lovinghood. But make no, make no mistake, huh? meditation is the best merit you can earn. Huh? And this uh, Supreme Master Television, Loving Hood, etc., are just jobs, yeah? And the best jobs you can have, that's all there is, okay? The best job that have the most merit for you. But other job can earn also sometimes equally as good merit, okay? Yes, Master. Yes, Master. No mistake, huh? This is just a job. And uh, we do it because we want to help others. We want to help to save the world and save the planet. Not physically, but to awaken their compassion, their loving nature, so that they can help themselves and save themselves. Uh, this is a good job that we're doing, but it's not purposely to earn merit at all. Yes, if you truly want to earn merit, the best way is meditation. Huh? But of course, not all of us can sit all day 24 hours and meditate, and we have to do something to contribute to this world. Then we pick the best job we can, you see? Like uh, working for the Supreme Master Television, opening a Loving Hood restaurant, or working for Loving Hood restaurant, etc., etc., no? Okay? Yes, Master. Yes. <laughs> so the best is meditation with sincerity on the light and sound, and concentrate well. This will earn the highest merit always, especially with direct heavenly light and sound, like the way we do, Guan Yin Method. Okay, uh, Master, my next question is, uh, many people seem to be naturally led to do a certain job in their lives, uh, and what kind of people would mostly do what kind of job? Um, do, do good people do good jobs and bad people do bad jobs? Okay. Okay, not necessarily, love, not necessarily. Now, sometimes good people has been somehow by some karmic uh, connection with some bad situation or bad people, they also be tempted or be misled or entangled into doing kind of bad job. But in their heart they always feel wrong. And then sooner or later they will wake up and they will quit that job if they can. Yes. And sometimes 
Bad people do good job also. <laughs> because they have earned some uh, some kind of merit connection in the past life that lead them into this good job in these lifetimes in order to redeem themselves. Yeah? Okay? Understand, Master. Yeah, many people are bad people <laughs> and happen to land in a good job. I'm telling you the truth. Understand, Master. Yes, Master. All right. Oh, well, one final question, Master, for me. Uh, do we earn more or less merits according to the number of people who benefit from our work? Yes, yes. Yes, of course. That also. That uh, helps. Yeah? Thank you, Master. You're welcome. Hi, Master. Hello, Olaf. What are the yeah. jobs that have the most merit? What kind of job have the most merit? Yes. Oh, <laughs> any kind of job that awaken human soul and lead them back to God. Yes. That's the best job. Okay. Yes, 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 Master. Earn the most merit. How do these positions compare in terms of merits? Master's attendant, resident, contact persons, Supreme Master television worker, loving hut worker, teacher, animal rights activist, vegan restaurant owner or worker, vegan clothes shop owner or worker, vegan hotel owner or worker, organic vegan farmer, animal farmer or hunter. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God! Animal farmer and hunter. Oh, okay. Any more job? Tobacco or alcohol seller? Yeah. And drug dealer. There is no compare between vegetarian restaurant, loving hood, for example, teacher and the animal farmer or hunter. Oh my God! All of uh, the job that uh, help people awaken consciousness or nourishing them physically or mentally, emotionally are meritorious job. Any job that harm others, kill animals or kill men are destined for hell. Okay? Yes, yes, yes Master. You know, animals, farmers for meat and eggs and dairy farmer and all that and hunters are jobs that destined for hell. We should not even contemplate in our dream even. Yes, Master. Okay. Yes, Master. The next question is, what is the merit earned when we rescue or adopt an abandoned animal from the street or animal shelter? When you adopt an animal, either domestic or wild, you just care for that animal. Yeah, with all your love and your attention and do whatever you can to make him or her comfortable. You don't think in terms of marriage anymore, okay? Yes, Master. And if we gain some merit out of that, then it's fine. But I don't think we should even think of marriage, you know? Like when yes, I Master. adopt my dogs, I only love them so much, I just have to take them home. I wish I could take the whole pounds home, you know, for example, like that. I never thought of marriage, so I don't even know if we have any marriage or not. But I'm sure if you rescue such an abandoned or, or distressed or injured animal, the marriage is in itself. The marriage is that you look at yourself. Huh? Suppose if you even think of in terms of marriage, then you look at yourself, you feel that, oh, you are a human being. You are worthy to be called the children of God. And that's the merit in itself, for example, huh? And yes, the merit yes, yes. more is that the animals, they love you, love you, love you so much. Every day you have so much joy and happiness with these rescue animals. And that is more than any merit I could ask for. Okay, love? Yes, Master. Thank you very much. Thank you, Master. Welcome. Well, it's wonderful to speak to you again, Master, and thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you also for your time. <laughs> <laughs> Any time, Master. <laughs> um, we are extremely privileged working here at Supreme Master Television and uh, being able to devote ourselves wholly to this mission. 
Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes you are very touched seeing our brothers and sisters who are out there in the so-called real world, who work full time and have a family, but they still find time to record programs for Supreme Master TV, or um, go and do relief work and uh, work at Loving Hut part time. Yeah. How much merits do they gain in comparison to someone working full time at Supreme Master Television headquarters, given that they have to balance it um, with their everyday life? Oh, there is no comparison. I mean, both are different, eh? Okay? And uh, it depends on how sincere you are, then you earn merit that way. But uh, if you want to know exactly how much we have to sit down and compare two people, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me which one are work full time in there and which one are uh, the one you mentioned, and then I, I make a calculation, okay? How many okay. times, how many minutes? <laughs> Maybe another time we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> As I have told you guys already, whatever we do in this world, we do it because we feel the need to do it. Like, uh, for example, our world is in, in trouble, so we, we just have to do Supreme Master Television to remind people. But at the beginning of this, I never thought we would gain or lose merit or anything. We just do it because it's necessary. Just like you see somebody drowning in the river, you don't have time to think that to have merit or not merit. All your heart is going into the benefit of that person and pull him out immediately. You think uh, later on, you see him well and happy and alive, you're so happy yourself. Yes. And I think that's even enough merit for me. <laughs> yeah? Yes. But at the moment, to be honest with you, I don't know how much merit we gain or we don't gain. I just feel that we work very hard <laughs> for the worthy cause. And sometimes I, uh, I feel like uh, I'm very grateful to you guys who work over there. And uh, in that case, I'm also trying to work very hard to catch up with you. Mm, and we Thank work you, together. Master. You are our inspiration. I never think of merit. Maybe now you asked about it. I'm sure we have some merit, but, well, you're welcome to have it all. <laughs> Whatever merit for television, uh, you're welcome to have all of them. Hmm? Hmm. All of you, the one who works for Supreme Master Television. If I have any merit, I dedicate it all to you guys. Okay? Thank you very much, Master. The best merit we could have out of this Supreme Master Television business is that we can save as many sentient beings, save their soul, awaken their compassionate nature again. That's the best merit I can think of out of working for Supreme Master Television. Don't you? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. But of course you are asking because we are in the married stuff, ne? so we keep asking in that direction. But we, I don't think any of you or myself ever think of gaining any merit while working for Supreme Master Television or going to help uh, unfortunate people or anything of the like, right? We don't think of merit at all. Yes, okay. Thank but you. while we are discussing, we are talking, okay? Right. Hello, Master. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah. Uh, I have two questions. The first question is, a person who struggles to do a good job but does it nevertheless versus someone who willingly does something, is there a difference in merits earned for the same job? Mm. Maybe not. Maybe not. You know? Yeah. Maybe not. The person who is struggling to try to do a good job on the person who is doing it easily but also doing it with all their heart. Both are equally meritorious, I think, because the reason he struggled because he has a more burden of karma in the past life, but nevertheless he still stick to it and knowing what is good and he continue to do it. And the person who has it easy because probably he has done similar thing before, so he doesn't have to struggle or he has earned some uh, other merit to help him to smooth out his path in this lifetime. So I think both are the same, huh? Okay. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. As long as they're both sincere. <laughs> yes. 
Okay. Yes, Master. Uh, to follow on the question, the next question, do we need to earn a certain level of merits in order to be a good tool for God and carry out Master's work smoothly? Thank you, Master. Yes, we probably have earned some certain level of merit in order to be a good tool for God. No? We have to, we should. Yeah, it's smoother that way. Huh? Otherwise, even if we don't feel it is smooth, we still carry on and continue with our best intention, then it will be fine also. Hmm? Yes, Master. Hi, Master. Yeah, hi. Um, I have two questions. Um, the first one is, does one's level of concentration or devotion while doing our job affect the amount of merits? Yes, of course, of course. The level of concentration and devotion while we are doing our job affects the amount of merit. That is true, yeah? Mm. Uh, in a discussion with disciples before, you mentioned that there are six level beings on this planet. However, you also mentioned before that it's very rare that beings past the fifth level come down here. How was it that they were able to come here? Yes, yes. They come, but they go fast. Eh? Normally, they don't stay that long. Hmm? Okay. Because they have to go through a lot of uh, difficulty to come down here, so nobody really likes to come down here and stay that long. Okay. Thank you. Um, do we gain more merits by working with good intention rather than mechanically, even if the end result is similar? Yeah. We have good intention, we earn more merit, for sure. My next question is, um, I have always thought that the motive behind the action is the most important in spiritual practice, and the only thing that counts is the, the motive, not the, not the action itself. But um, uh -huh. because I read a story from the Bible and um, there was an old poor woman going out of the temple and she gives two coins. And the rich Pharisee boasting gives 300 coins. And Jesus said that the old woman was closer to the kingdom of God than the Pharisee. And that story shows uh -huh. that action is not what counts, but the motive behind the action. Correct. So I have also difficulty understanding um, where the fairness is in a situation like the following, when uh, when a practitioner gives meal without love um, to a, to another person, high level being, and there is another person who gives the same meal to a, to a low level being, but with full of joy and full of love, but doesn't gain as much merit as the other one. So, could you explain uh, about that? Thank I you, don't know who tell you that. Did I tell you that? No, I, I've been told that it was not you. Oh, no, it seems strange to me also, you know. I think it's not correct. Whomever we give, no matter how high level we are or how low level the person, we must give, of course, with always with love and joy and unconditional spirit. That's the only way we should give, no matter what level you are, okay? Okay. And we don't care about merit, how much or not. <laughs> yes, Master. Yes, when we give to someone, all our attention and love go into that person to make that person more comfortable, happy, and that is the only merit we should think of. Huh? Yes, okay? Master. All right, thank you. Thank you, Master.